Hello everyone, welcome to our channel. Today I'll show you how to make your TicWatch Pro 2020 even faster and improve battery life with the developer mode. So let's get started. If you are someone new to our channel, please consider subscribing to our channel as we do regular videos for various smartwatches like this one, smartphone reviews, tech tutorials and much more. Also check out our playlist tab to find categorized videos for various content we post on this channel. Before I even show you anything, please hear me out with this disclaimer. Developer mode is strictly restricted for developers only. Playing around with developer mode is not recommended by me and maybe even the manufacturer. You can try these tricks out as shown in this video at your own risk. For me it worked and that's why I'm sharing it with you guys, FYI I'm not a developer. That being said, let's start by showing you how to enter the developer mode. By default developer mode is hidden in most of the devices so that the general public cannot access or mess things up in it. Go in the settings, system, about, and click about seven times on the build number, and you will enter the developer mode, which you will find it on the main page of the setting under the system. Now by any chance, if you want to exit the developer mode, all you have to do is restart the watch and you will not see the developer mode over here. Now that we have unveiled the developer mode, let's see what's inside it. The first one is stay awake when charging. You can see it's turned on in my case and that's why you see that the watch is in the charging brake and not on my wrist. So I don't have to keep pressing the buttons to keep the screen on. In the Wear OS smartwatches by default there is no option to adjust the screen wake time unless you install a third party app. So for this video purpose I have turned it on. Next is Bluetooth snoop logging. It's turned off in my case but basically if turned on it keeps log of all the Bluetooth transmissions. Next is the vibrate on connectivity change. Again turned off in my case but turning it on will make the watch vibrate if it were to change the connectivity. That is vibrate when it gets connected or disconnected to the Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. Next is ADB debugging. This is turned off but basically when you want to manually install certain files on your watch then you have to turn this option on. ADB means Android debugging. It can be done over Bluetooth or over Wi-Fi or possibly by the charging brick as well. Debugging is always done from the recovery mode. I have done a video on how to enter the recovery mode linked over here in case if you guys want to check it out once you're done watching this one. Next is revoke debugging authorization. Over here you can revoke any previous debugging authorization. Next is the wear developer options. In here you will find force display burning protection. It's disabled in my case for good reason but I think basically it's not possible to turn burning protection on for an OLED watch. But I guess since TicWatch Pro also has an LCD display on top of the AMOLED, this option is maybe for that. Again not sure, if you know, please comment down below. Next is the force low bit ambient mode. Again disabled but I think enabling it may limit the possibilities for the ambient mode. Frankly it's uncharted territory for me. Now let's go back and the next is allow mock locations. This is an option that will allow a developer to set any GPS location for testing purpose. Next is the logger buffer size. It's 64 kilobyte in my case. You can change it to whatever you want up to one megabyte. Basically you can store more logs if you have more buffer size like that uh, Bluetooth snoop logging which we talked earlier during this video. Next is the debug layout. Turning it on will turn on guideline for all the screen elements like buttons, tabs, etc. used by the app developers. You can see all these red and blue lines, uh, pretty scary, huh? Let's turn it off. Next is the debug overdraw. Turning it on will overdraw all the clickable elements. You can see this uh, green highlight on all the clickable options, again used for app developers. Let's go ahead and turn it off. Moving on is the debug GPU profiling. 
Turning it on will instantly show you screen peculiar graph of the GPU that is the graphical processing unit which changes on each scroll. So just let's go ahead and turn it off. Now here comes the option that can make your watch instantly faster and improve the battery life. And let me explain you how. The Windows animation scale. You can see it's off in my case, but in your case it would be either 0.5 or times one. So basically turning it off will turn off the animations that you see when you click on the menu button or exit any app. Let me show it to you. This will make it look like that the watch is super fast, but in fact, it's just legs animation. Let's go back in the developer mode. Next is the transition animation scale. Again, it's off in my case. So if this is turned off, you will see that the transition from one screen to another, like growing, going from the home screen to the widgets um, or accessing the Google Assistant will feel super fast because it lacks animations. Let's go back in the developer mode. Next is the animation duration scale which is also turned off but the more animation duration you have the more laggy your watch will feel. So just turn off these three options will definitely make your watch feel way faster and also improve the battery life slightly as there is basically zero animation happening. Next is the pointer location. This will basically map a path of what you touch on the screen. You can see this uh, unique lines on the screen wherever I drag. Let's turn it off. Next is the show taps. This will basically show you wherever you touch. I actually like this one, but let's keep it off as having it on may impact the battery life. Next is the bug report in menu. Again off in my case, but I guess turning it on will show the bug report in the recovery mode menu. Next is the automatically enable Wi-Fi when charging. This is turned on for the fact that I usually update all the apps from the Play Store when I keep my watch on charging so the apps get updated faster over Wi-Fi. Next is Wi-Fi Verbose Logging. Basically Verbose Logging provides more information than the standard logging which is useful for developer for troubleshooting purpose. Next is the Mobile Battery Saver and it will be turned on by default if it's not you can turn it on as the name implies it will help to save the mobile phone's battery life by not constantly pinging the mobile unnecessarily next is the battery optimization here is where you'll find various options which are mostly not available on this watch anyways let's go back and lastly it's the show Chimera options, I hope I pronounced it right, which I don't know, but I think it's something related to Google Play services. If anyone knows about it, please comment down below so other viewers can know. But that's pretty much it with this video. I just wanted to show you all how to enter the developer mode, what options do you get in the developer mode, and few animation options that can really make your TickWatch Pro feel faster and improve a bit of battery life on it. So that's it. I really hope you found this video helpful. If you did, then please give this video a thumbs up and maybe give it a thumbs up anyways as an appreciation to our effort for making this video. It really means a lot. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe as there are more informative videos coming up, which I don't want you guys to miss out on. And take care. I'll catch you guys in the next one.